for a studio that has gone through as much bullshit as they have and um you know with them being ukrainian and just all of the hardships just do note and just please take this into consideration as well when you go through and play this game these people have poured blood, sweat, and tears. So the most important part of my video that I have for you today is just to and understand um, what has transpired as far as GSE Game World has is concerned as a studio. Yeah, they're safe in Prague, but there's a lot of other problems that have um, larger ramifications and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that were poured into this game, loss that was, you know, a part of, you know, people that were making this game may not be alive anymore. Uh, it's just a beautiful example of determination and willingness to persevere through all of the hardships and all of the bullshit that they have had to deal with as a studio. So just please, again, as you consider playing this game or you're playing this game, do keep that in mind as you're playing it. Uh, there's no other experience, especially for a game studio, other than having to deal with problems like this in real life, especially when it's a game that has a lot of violence within it itself. So um, huge shout out to GSE Game World for creating this game itself, and I cannot wait to keep playing it. Uh, well, the wait is finally over, ladies and gentlemen. Stalker 2 is here. This is going to be my impressions on the game after six hours of playing. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, I definitely want to leave a disclaimer in this. Just do remember, as I'm talking about this game, I am coming strictly from an impressions point of view. I have about six hours spent in the game. Um, I'm very aware of there being some technical issues on PC. Uh, this is going to be strictly my first impressions after playing on the Xbox Series X. I do have a mouse and keyboard plugged into my console, so I'm able to um, have a little bit of an easier time with the first person shooting mechanics. Other than that, uh, the game itself is running on performance mode. Um, with that being said, if you like videos like this, it really helps a small channel like mine uh, get out there by you leaving the like. And uh, if you guys want some more Stalker 2 content in the future, which it's most certainly going to be coming hot and heavy for you, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. This is a gamer's point of view. Um, there's not much money that's going to be made off this video actually there's no mid-roll ads as well so if you guys uh, are busy playing a game or doing anything in your life you can feel free to have this video playing in the background uh the audio or the video part of it is strictly just so you can have something interesting to watch while you're listening to my ugly voice but um yeah without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's talk about stalker 2 so right off the bat let's talk about some of the negatives surrounding the game or my experience up to this point I don't have too too many and I guarantee you over time there will be a couple more gripes that I do find with the game Everybody has a gripe with the game, but uh, just do note that overall so far um, I'm making this video and all I want to do is go right back into playing the game itself so uh, some of the negatives with the game itself is sometimes there's a little bit of pop-in. I've noticed when I'm running into like a hub town and I'm sprinting into the town, I'll just see floating guns and then the next second I turn around, they'll be, uh, the, the NPCs will be loaded in. Um, it's happened maybe two times and it happened when I was frantically sprinting to avoid a emission, which is something that can happen within the world. Um, that's just one of the gameplay mechanics that are going to be in the game. I'll talk about that later, maybe. Um, a couple other negatives uh, that I do have is sometimes the AI can be just slightly glitchy. Um, and what I mean by that is they kind of move around a little wonkily. Um, other than that, there's not too much else. Um, I did have one soft progress lock uh, during my playthrough, and again, it was during one of the um, emissions that happened in the zone, and what happened is I was so low on health well, um, from radiation poisoning that I didn't notice, and my game auto-saved right in the wrong spot when I'm in shelter, and as soon as I would reload or die, I would reload into the game and have no way to actually heal the radiation. I just had to quickly reload and auto-save. Thankfully, it was like three minutes of progress that I lost. The game does do a pretty good job at having auto-saves, so it's not the biggest bad part or bad thing in the world uh, when stuff like this happens. Th again, thankfully, the auto-save system in this game is pretty forgiving. 
Um, other than that, uh, those are all the negatives that I really can tell you, um, especially from like, again, an immediate impression. Um, let's talk about the positives so far. Um, we're going to go right into the actual initial start in the video game or the game itself, um, the story. And we're going to go, I'm not going to give you guys any spoilers, so don't worry about any of that. Um, I'm just going to say early on, the story is pretty enthralling. I will say some of the names are a little harder to remember for certain people, but as I've kind of played, I've put faces to the names uh, relatively easy, uh, thankfully. So it's a pretty enthralling story. It has me hooked. I want to know what's happening. I want to know what's going on um, in the world. And yeah, I'll let you guys, you know, figure that out for yourselves. Another really positive part or a nice thing about the game that I've very much so enjoyed. And um, I'm going to kind of give you guys like my overall feeling this game feels like fallout new vegas and what i mean by that is when i'm walking around the world um just the way that the npcs interact with you it just kind of feels like fallout new vegas i might be crazy um i definitely want to know what you guys are thinking in the comment section if that's something that sounds kind of somewhat agreeable and what i mean is obviously it's way better looking fallout new vegas but the way that you interact with npcs and how the camera pans in uh just really reminds me of it especially as well as how the overall world feels yeah it's weird <laughs> so so uh up to this point again the factions as well this is how it also reminds me of fallout new vegas there's gonna be plenty of fa uh, different factions spread throughout the game itself that you can um learn more about and get interested in and just find lore all throughout the world itself and damn the factions are really interesting so what about the gunplay well the gunplay in the game is very very good here and there it can be a little clunky on the keyboard uh the leaning mechanics can kind of be a little bit of a hindrance when you're pressing the lean buttons it is a toggle so sometimes i'll just catch myself like kind of gangster leaning in one direction and just kind of popping shots and like having to like move my finger in an awkward position just to like change the the lean or to cancel the lean but the gunplay is very very crunchy headshots do a very large amount of damage early game up to this point but later on i'm assuming that having fmj rounds or armor piercing rounds is going to be very important versus more armored targets i haven't fought too too many armored armored uh opponents or people yet but again gunplay and just the overall feeling of it is very very well put together especially when it comes down to the also having like degrade or like durability on your guns and different attachments and upgrades that you can have on your gun uh to reduce recoil you know help with range reduce bullet spread have a laser sight all of that is a very very big part of the game itself let's also talk about atmosphere the atmosphere of the world that overall again it's very very visceral it's so how do i describe it it's like it's like the calm before the storm as you're going around exploring the world it's eerily beautiful um, up to this point, I will tell you that I absolutely hate the nighttime in this game. It just makes it even more scary, um, especially when a blood sucker comes um, running down you or running you down. But um, yes, the atmosphere is pinpoint spot on. I haven't even been to any of like the real key locations within uh, the zone itself, but I will say um, overall, again, the atmosphere is just perfect. The um, environmental storytelling is also pretty high level you will find a lot of pdas which are this game's equivalent of like a hollow tape if you've played fallout before um, which are just like notes or personal logs that you find throughout the world of um, the struggles of various people whether it be a stalker or, or an important faction member or whatever it may be um, the sound design in the game again it is really really good i will say that there's a couple hitches here and there um but it's probably just due to the sheer volume of what was going on on screen at the time um especially when there's a gunfight cracking and everybody is fighting and then there's a storm that comes in and then there's a freaking bloodsucker or hounds chasing so the sound design can be a little overwhelming 
Um, but I have played this game with a really good uh, set of headphones on or headset on, um, as well as the volume cranked up. And up to this point, again, just from playing, like, when you're walking around and enjoying the atmosphere, the sound and everything just sucks you right into the world. The guns themselves, we kind of brushed on this a little bit ago, but the guns... Uh, in the game are going to be highly upgradable and highly customizable. You'll find attachments all throughout the world, whether it be extended mags, new scopes, um, and various other items that you can attach to various weapons that you find. And all of the guns themselves, again, as you upgrade them, you can make them lose less durability. You can have them do less weapon spread. I have kind of brushed over this, but overall, the, the amount of guns that I found early on is pretty nice the ambient sound within the world. So how does the world sound as you're just walking around? Uh, the crunching of the leaves, the brushing of the bushes, the anomaly beeper, the rad, Geiger counter kind of going crazy as you get into like a heavily radiated spot. All of it's really, really well done. Um, there is music in the game, but it's, um, it's, it's kind of spread a little bit far and um in between different areas but once you get to listen to some of that ukrainian uh music bumping it's kind of actually a vibe i don't know how to describe it other than it, like some of the tracks sound kind of like um like ukrainian hip-hop some of them feel like um like rock music and it's really gritty and it's really kind of like punk in a way so it's like it, it sounds really good i don't know what they're saying but um yeah ukrainians know how to make some fucking good music because it it makes you want to sit by that campfire and just enjoy yourself um the voice work itself on the English dub can be a little bit, not not 10 out of 10, but um, it's still there and it's very serviceable, the overall voice acting, um, especially if I like the main character himself, he does a really good job, Skiff. Um, and there's some other characters as well that have really good voice acting, but overall, uh, some of the characters that you do meet, their voices can kind of be a little bit off-putting to how they, like compared to how they look and how they sound. But um, other than that, that, that's kind of like a slight slight issue um it's not anything major or bad i actually really want to see how this game feels um with the ukrainian voice or like ukrainian voice work and then just having subtitles i think i'm going to give it a try with that overall the survival mechanics within the game again are very very interesting so it's not anything too over the top or too powerful so uh, you're going to be going doing your day-to-day -day life and you're going to have to eat some food and you're going to have to deal with radiation and certain ways some ways of dealing with radiation may, may be through drinking a beer or having anti-radiation medicine sitting around um, and eating food if you don't eat food your combat effectiveness has kind of gone down so you have to find food around the world. Um, all of these have very, very uh, great animations as far as like eating a can of food and like stabbing the, the, you know, the meat with your knife. It's just really well done. The overall survival mechs, again, like going around and having to scavenge and having to think about what you're picking up and how much ammo you have in your inventory space um i saw one youtuber i can't remember who was talking crap about the inventory space in this game but that's kind of the reason like that's the point behind a survival first person shooter is to have to like think about what you're carrying and the person that was talking um, about the game itself was kind of like yeah i don't know what's going on and then they proceed to pick up like three ak-74s and complain about inventory space so the inventory management hasn't been too big of a hindrance on me up to this point again i am comfortably able to carry my two main weapons my sidearm and maybe even a third uh primary gun the backpack's pretty big for your stalker so i don't really see any problems and uh definitely later game especially when you're getting deeper into the progression of the game you'll probably be able to upgrade your inventory space as he plays so um yeah it's that's kind of just like a nice little bit of it so there's that um upgrading weapons is pretty easy you're gonna need a lot of money in order to do so but the upgrades can be fairly worth it especially when you're going over and doing some you know degradation or weapon degradation um reduction um upgrades to your guns as well as like recoil and bullet spread so that's kind of nice um, the overall gameplay loop, what are you going to be doing when you're playing this game? Well, obviously there's going to be a main narrative, but um, the quests 
uh, themselves or the quest design and the gameplay loop itself is kind of just like playing a Fallout game. Uh, you go here, clear this place out, talk to this person, figure out what's going on in this spot. Uh, and while you're doing that, you might get sidetracked, go to this random gunshot that you hear off in the distance or this random uh, location that you see and you're like, hmm, I'm wonder if there's something behind this door. Um, and sometimes it it works in your favor. Sometimes it does not. Um, so the quest design, again, it's fairly, it's fairly interesting. The overall cinematic moments are pretty enthralling as well. They're pretty well done. Again, it's all like serviceable. It's all really, really well done. It's well thought out. Um, is it 10 out of 10? Is it rockstar perfect? No. Is it, you know, going to be anything earth shattering? No, but it's very high quality. And up to this point, it's very, it's more than serviceable. Um, up to this point, the combat, how the combat feels, the combat in the game is amazing. Um, especially when you're fighting humans, I think that the overall gunfights that you can get into are very, very, um, intense. And especially if you pump up the difficulty to the highest mode right now, I'm playing on the, um, the medium mode or the stalker mode. Um, and then there's an easier mode there. If you want to have just like a story experience with minimal threat, I guess, to your character. So we're going to also talk about the money or like, uh, the currency in within the game itself, which are called coupons. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong. Um, but um, yeah, so you go complete quests, you get rewarded with coupons, sometimes you get rewarded with items, sometimes there's unique weapons that you can find throughout the world as well. Um, and all of that making the game even more interesting. The map size is massive. Um, up to this point, I've finally been able to leave this area on the map called the lesser zone. And then I'm in the greater zone, I guess, um, various regions that you can kind of travel to throughout the map itself. Um, and again, it's massive, especially when you're covering it on foot, dodging a bunch of anomalies spread throughout the world. So, um, there's going to be a lot of secrets hidden throughout this land, and I've already uncovered um, a couple. If you guys, again, want to see a video of certain things that I found up to this point, again, feel free to leave, you know, subscribe to the channel so you can see those uh, guides later on. Um, but yeah, the overall just like the feeling of exploration in this game is fulfilled. I want to go off at the beaten path, and I've noticed myself doing almost every side quest that I come across. So kudos to the team for making this game just suck me into the world again i am making this video and i just want to get back into playing the game and i have a concert that i'm going to tonight um and i partly don't even want to care like really care if i were to go to the concert or not and just play stalker 2 um so is this game worth it well i'm playing it on game pass i didn't have to spend a single penny on it um, and that is the greatest value behind this game. I think currently, um, and again, I'm six hours into the game. I'm on my honeymoon stage, but, um, overall, this is a game that's right up my alley and right up, uh, my alley of enjoyment. Um, a, your mileage may vary if you're not interested in RPGs or first person, um, shooters, you might not enjoy this game too, too much. You might also not enjoy this game too, too much. If you're going to be, uh, if you don't like a difficult challenge, um, but you know, you can always turn the difficulty down. If you don't really like the, the difficulty of the challenge, you just want to play for the story. But who is this game made for as well? This game is made for anybody who's played Fallout. I could tell you fucking that right now. This game is made for people who love and enjoy RPGs, as well as a little bit of horror mixed in them RPGs, as well as a little bit of interesting exploration in an open world game. If you like open world games, you like first person shooters, you like RPGs, this is right up your alley. Um, up to this point, I don't want to be super, or it's not even that I want to be a super, uh, super gener generous with like my rating, but overall, um, again, six hours in, I can see myself spending multiple playthroughs playing this game up to this point. Um, the level of re uh, replayability, especially with quest options is going to be pretty high. Um, I've already come across a lot of interesting, sort of decisions that I have to make fairly early on in the game itself and a lot of quests, multiple quests, again, after six hours, 
uh, main quests and side quests and this game having multiple endings i'll probably end up doing multiple playthroughs i definitely want to do a playthrough in the future on the higher difficulty or the highest difficulty in the game itself because i haven't even touched that bit and i can tell you right now that on my medium difficulty i've died like 14 times most of the times being the bloodsuckers but um yeah I think this game is very much so worth it. If you have Game Pass, it's not free, obviously, but you're paying for a subscription in order to play the game itself. Very much so worth it. Would I have bought this game? Yes, I would have spent the full price of this game, especially on console itself. Again, I'm not playing on PC, so I don't know exactly what the, the woes that the PC players are going through, but I feel like the Xbox Series X version is running... Um, it's running fairly decently. Again, there's always going to be optimization that can be made. But um, again, overall, I feel like the game is worth it. And um, do be ready for another v review in the future. But I think that's kind of where I'm going to leave it today. I know it's kind of a jumbled up video. I just kind of quickly threw a list as I was playing the game. Um, wrote a list down of certain aspects I wanted to talk about. I hope I brushed over everything. If you guys are curious about anything um, at all, do let me know. Again, if you've made it all the way to this point in the video, I would love to hear you talk um, and just conversate in the comment section. I'm very vocal down there, so if you guys uh, want to chat, we can. Always, I'll always respond back and forth with you. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day or night, wherever you are. Do expect more stalker content in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.